free our mind Whoa, have no fear for atomic energy Cause none of them are gonna stop off the time Allah shall kill our prophets While we stand aside and look Some say in just a part of it We got the full to salute the lives and contribution of our heroes and heroine. Chairman of the Board of Management, Mr. Rodcliffe Robertson. Principal, Mrs. Emily Lawrence Ricketts. Guest speaker, Miss Nakinski Robinson. Miss Westmoreland Festival Queen 2021. Members of staff, parents, students, other invited guests, and our viewers on the various social media platform. A superb day to you all. Welcome to Godfrey Stewart High School Heritage Celebration. This celebration will showcase talents and activities that will highlight the theme, saluting our heroes, safeguarding our legacy. As we salute our heroes, and safeguard our legacy. Let us use this occasion to reflect on the struggles, the courage, bravery, determination, and persistence of our ancestors who paved the foundation of freedom so we can emancipate ourselves from mental slavery. Words of Robert Nesta Marley. Let us be like our heroes and turn challenges into opportunities. Let us overcome obstacles and build our beautiful land of wood and water. Let us be visionaries like our heroes and set concrete steps to safeguard our Jamaican legacy. Once again, welcome to an event that will have you singing redemption songs. Thank you. I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate the Godfrey Stewart High School in seeking the need to have a week where our students and teachers, you can pause and celebrate the rich heritage that we have as Jamaicans. You have chosen the theme, saluting our heroes, safeguarding our legacy. And I hope that as we go through this week, that we will pause and reflect upon the sacrifices that our heroes and heroines have made so that we are who we are today. Let us pray. Our kind, compassionate Father, we thank you, God, that you have blessed us with the privilege where for this week, Lord, we can pause and reflect upon the rich heritage that we have as Jamaicans. Oh God, we have the theme, saluting our heroes, safeguarding our legacy. Oh God, as we go throughout this week, we ask that you will lead, that you will be with each presenter, that you will be with each student, you will be with each teacher, that as they reflect their Lord upon the rich godly heritage that we have, that we will be able to look back and say, thank you, Lord, for your leadership. Thank you, Lord, for your guidance. And thank you, Lord, 
for Jamaica land we love. We ask now, dear Lord, that you will be with each teacher, you will be with each student, you will be with the administrators, the principal, the vice principal, or the heads of the department. And we ask, so oh God, that everything will go well this week, that our students pause to reflect, that they themselves, dear Lord, will learn and that they themselves will want to become heroes and heroines, individuals that will stand up, individuals that will be agents of change, and individuals that will help in bringing Jamaica one notch higher to the standard that the Lord wants. Continue to be with Godfrey Stewart High School. May this school continue to grow from strength to strength, we ask. In Jesus' name, amen. All I ever had Redemption song Sons of As we celebrate National Heroes Day and Heritage Week 2021 We celebrate the life and work of our national heroes And our heroine Nanny Paul Bogle Sam Sharp Norman Washington Manley, Sir Alexander Bustamante, Marcus Garvey, and George William Gordon. These persons have given their lives for Jamaica and our people. They have set the stage for where we are now and who we have become as a nation. But in 2021, during this pandemic, we question who today are our real heroes in our lives. And I must be biased and say our teachers and our parents have done an enormous job in getting our children the future of our country to where they are throughout this pandemic. And as we celebrate the national heroes and the heroine and all that they have done, let us be mindful in this season of all our teachers and all educators and all our parents who themselves have become teachers in their own right. When the schools were closed, they took up the mantle. When the churches were closed, they pick up the mantle and became the pastors. When the hospitals and the medical centers were, were crowded, they took up the mantle and became the nurses and the doctors for their children. And today, we celebrate them. And I ask you, as we go into this day and this week of celebration of Heritage Week and National Heroes Day, let us remember them the people who are the real hero in our lives. So, we continue to celebrate and we continue to say, long live our national heroes, but long live our teachers, our educators, and our parents. God for Stuart family, I wish you a happy Heroes Day and a reflective National Heritage Week. God bless you. Redemption song, songs of freedom. Nani, a strong and able woman, born in Ghana of the Ashanti tribe, transported to Jamaica as a slave and lived and died. In Nani Town, high in the hills of Portland, where indigenous flowers bloom. A woman without fear, fighting a guerrilla warfare. In the hilly terrain, come rain, come shine, as the mist fly under cloudy sky. A woman with a burning desire to succeed setting the place on fire and slipping out of sight like a shadow in the night. A woman with a natural sheen, nature's queen in scene after scene. Nanny of the Maroons, a visionary leader, mind reader, and lay preacher, a phenomenal woman 
a woman sublime, one of a kind, blogging the mind, a woman before her time, a natural heroine. We are our only heroine, nanny of the maroons. This generation triumphantly. Chairman of the Board of Governors, Mr. Watchit Robertson, our specially invited guests, Ms. Nakinski Robinson, other invited guests, PSA, PTA, colleagues, good day. Today, as we engage in our virtual Heritage Week celebrations under the theme, saluting our heroes, safeguarding our legacy, I implore you to reflect on our past and be assured that the hope which we have must stay alive as it will continue to warm our hearts even as we experience difficulties in this pandemic. Regardless of what is happening around us, the sun will come out tomorrow. Our heroes have worked hard to safeguard the legacy of which we are a part. So the onus now is for our generation and the next and the next to preserve this legacy. Remember that our rich heritage and awesome culture are the identifying marks of which we are and will forever be. I want to applaud those unsung heroes who have been working assiduously to engage our community partners as we continue to practice our civic duties and maintain this loyalty to our country, Jamaica. Our heroes have worked to give us the privilege of speaking and standing up for what is right. And as we look out for our neighbors every single day, let us maintain those precepts that make us truly Jamaicans. Our institution has always allowed our students to recognize their worth and practice good citizenship. In this virtual space, we encourage you students to continue to be good citizens, to be respectful, and to give your best in all that you do. We believe in you students. We believe that you are capable to accomplish all that you work towards. Make every day count. Continue to be nation builders. Remember our heroes, and remember, you can be a hero too. God bless. Before God and all mankind, I pledge the love and loyalty of my heart, the wisdom and courage of my mind, the strength and vigor of my body. In the service of my fellow citizens, I promise to stand up for justice, brotherhood, and peace. To work diligently and creatively, to think generously and honestly, so that Jamaica may under God. Increase in beauty, fellowship, and prosperity. And play her part in advancing the welfare of the whole human race.
Mante, my name is Marcia Douglas, currently the acting colonel of the Charleston Moon community, the chief. Welcome to our museum. So the role of Nanny of the Maroon in Freedom for the Maroon is that she um, provide or she make herself into the diligent leader that one would have been looking for. One with spirituality, one with the zeal of, of moving on, and one with the zeal to protect. And so what she did was to ensure that her people had been served the right way in which um, she ensures that they were no longer in slavery. So what she did was to undermine the British on the plantation with the help of her two sisters, Mishibo Kwashi and Shanti Rose. And so doing that, they took their people to the mountains where they had advantage over the British. The British had to import dogs or bloodhounds from Cuba to hunt them down. Now later on, when the treaty was signed and Jamaica gained independence, it was really a hard tussle for people to recognize Nanny for who she was. Um, thanks to um, recent Colonel, Colonel Harris of Moortown, who had made that one of his deepest dream and one of his aim, one of the most... Samuel Sharp was born into slavery to Judah Bligham in the parish of St. James, Jamaica, on a plantation owned by Samuel and Jane Sharp around 1801. Named after his master, Sam Sharp is also a folk figure and was known for his pivotal role in the 1831 Christmas Rebellion on the Kensington Estate, a rebellion credited as instrumental to full emancipation in 1838. Sharp, a Baptist preacher, was literate and a strong speaker who was very religious. He had read many British anti-slavery bulletins and believed that Jamaica's only chance for redemption was the total abolition of slavery. He was allowed to become well-educated and as a result, he was respected by other slaves. Sharp became a well-known preacher and a leader in the Baptist church, which had long welcomed slaves as members and recognized them as preachers. He was a deacon at the Birchell Baptist Church in Montego Bay, whose pastor was Reverend Thomas Birchell, a missionary from England. Sharp spent most of his time traveling to different parishes in Jamaica, educating the slaves about Christianity, which he believed promised freedom. Sharp came up with the idea of passive resistance and communicated this message to slaves after prayer meetings on different estates. He explained his beliefs that the slaves had been freed in England but kept enslaved by the planters in Jamaica and described how they could conduct a peaceful strike a few days after Christmas by simply refusing to return to work in the fields unless their concerns were heard. He made them kiss the Bible to show their loyalty. They, in turn, took the plan to the other parishes until the idea had spread throughout St. James, Trelawney, Westmoreland, and even St. Elizabeth and Manchester. Word of the plan reached the ears of some of the planters. Troops were A boy of humble beginnings, taking his first steps towards a life decorated and defined by the search for a proud black identity. The journey began on August 17, 1887, in a rural district nestled in the garden parish of St. Anne, where the union of a mason and a domestic worker birthed a living legacy of black self-empowerment.
when you hear him describe his mother, um, Sarah Jane Garvey, she had a different kind of influence on him. I think that he inherited a lot of her sense of compassion. Marcus also inherited much from his father, Marcus Messiah Garvey Sr. Together his parents gave him a strong foundation, starting at 32 Market Street in St. Anne's Bay. The Universal Negro Improvement Association, the Pan-African Movement, the Negro Factories Corporation, the Black Star Liner Shipping Company, all symbols of achievement to which Garvey could lay claim. But his life was more than the public platform familiar to most. Garvey was equal parts Pan-Africanist and father, equal parts orator and husband, scholar and son, national hero and lifetime student. As a young boy, Garvey developed a love of reading, first from his father's private library and later the more extensive collection of his godfather Alfred Burroughs. An apprenticeship with Burroughs at age 14 provided a platform for literary expression through the printing press. It's an influence that would find expression in several newspaper developments and publications throughout Garvey's life. Even as he trod the path of visionary, philosopher and scholar, Marcus Garvey was a family man. After a long courtship, he married Amy Ashwood in a private Catholic church ceremony, followed by an elaborate public ceremony and reception at Liberty Hall on Christmas Day, 1919. The union didn't last. But Garvey found love and family life again with his longtime secretary, Amy Jakes. The two married in July 1922 and had two sons, Marcus Jr. and Julius. You can see letters that they, they wrote to each other when his sons were in Jamaica and he was in England. He has nicknames for them. Um, he speaks to them the same way a loving father would speak to any child. From the dirt tracks in a small rural community to a global stage promoting change, the right excellent Marcus Mosiah Garvey was the epitome of ambition. When you look at his background versus what he was able to achieve in a very, very short time period, you have to recognize that it was ambition that was driving him. But most importantly, he had ambition, not just for himself, but for people of his race. He wanted black people to be liberated in every sense of the word, not just physically, but mentally, economically, socially, and so on. On June 10, 1940, a nation lost a hero. Humanity lost a world changer. Marcus Garvey was finally laid to rest in 1964 in Jamaica after 52 short years. The man from St. Anne's Bay had given black people a new way of looking at themselves. He'd told them to embrace their identity, that they could achieve anything. Up your mighty race, accomplish what you will. No one remembers. George William Gordon, now right excellent George William Gordon, national hero, was born in 1815, the son of a Scottish father and an, and an enslaved Jamaican mother. He got a call to make the world a better place. And for that, he was never forgiven. You should know then that conditions in, in Jamaica then were just, were just, it's it just unbelievable. People were suffering 311,000 persons in 1838, enslaved, received their freedom, and were just thrown outside. And what George William Gordon did, he bought lands, 
and he cut up the lands and allowed the poor, the dispossessed, to have access to the land. And his colleagues did not like that. He chastised the governor in meetings right at this space that the governor needed to do more for the people. And the governor didn't like it, called him a mischief maker. And this is the space where George William Gordon came to, as it were, give up himself because he heard they were looking for him. And from here, he was taken to St. Thomas, where he was tried and hanged on the 23rd of October, 1865. And he reached the Friday and they hanged him the Monday morning. But before he was hanged, he asked for permission to write a letter to his dear wife, Lucy. He had married this lady, Shannon, Lucy Shannon. He married her and he asked that he could write a letter and they allowed him to write the letter. That would have been Sunday night, night early Monday morning. He wrote the letter to say that he was innocent. And if anything that he did was, that was bad, was to help poor people. George William Gordon, now right excellent George William Gordon, national hero, was born in 1815, the son of a Scottish father and an, and an enslaved Jamaican mother. He got a call to make the world a better place and for that he was never forgiven. You should know then that conditions in, in Jamaica then were just, were just, it's it just unbelievable. People were suffering 311,000 persons in 1838, enslaved, received their freedom and were just thrown outside. And what George William Gordon did, he bought lands and he cut up the lands and allowed the poor, the dispossessed to have access to the land. And his colleagues did not like that. He chastised the governor in meetings right at this space that the governor needed to do more for the people. And the governor didn't like it, called him a mischief maker. And this is the space where George William Gordon came to, as it were, give up himself because he heard they were looking for him. And from here, he was taken to St. Thomas, where he was tried and hanged on the 23rd of October, 1865. And he reached the Friday, and they hanged him the Monday morning. But before he was hanged, he asked for permission to write a letter to his dear wife, Lucy. He had married this lady, Shannon, Lucy Shannon. He married her, and he asked that he could write a letter, and they allowed him to write the letter. That would have been Sunday night, night early Monday morning. He wrote the letter to say that he was innocent. And if anything that he did was, that was bad, was to help poor people. Born in Stony Gut, St. Thomas in the 1820s, he suffered as a slave. He toiled in the hot sun working and praying for the day he could say, yes, freedom come. And when that day came, the day he was free, the plan of becoming fully independent was his next feat. One he accomplished, small farmer, then landowner to being one of 106 persons on the voters list, he was well on his way. So much so, he became a Baptist deacon in the village, a true Jamaican activist, angered by the injustices and oppression faced by the people in St. Thomas by one Governor Edward Eyre. So, he gathered his people and marched onward they did, left, right, left, right, on October 11, 1865, the day of the Morant Bay Rebellion. 
over 500 people died, but not in vain. That special day spurred changes in the social and economic conditions of people not only in St. Thomas, but the entire Jamaica. The right excellent Paul Bogle, the man who lived and died for his people on October 24, 1865. A man of honor, a man of truth, our national hero. In Roxborough, Manchester is a museum dedicated to telling the story of the life and work of the Right Honourable Norman Washington Manley. You will find it nestled on a hillside at the place of his birth. Once inside, you will be captivated by intriguing information on his years as a soldier, athlete, scholar, statesman and advocate. At the museum, you can read about how Norman Manley supported the cause of the workers at the time of the Labour Troubles in 1938. His advocacy took on a more defined role when he rose to lead the newly formed People's National Party PNP in 1938 and remained as president until his retirement in 1969. Norman Washington Manley became chief minister after the 1955 election and premier in 1958 the same year Jamaica joined the West Indies Federation. A faithful supporter of the Federation, Manley put the issue to the people, holding a referendum in 1961 to decide if the country should remain in the Federation. The answer was no, and Manley arranged for Jamaica's orderly withdrawal. Manley kept himself busy with the things he was very passionate about, leaving behind an extensive legacy, such as his role in obtaining universal adult suffrage in 1944, and developing a new constitution for independent Jamaica. And so, in 1954, he led efforts to secure executive powers for elected representatives. It was also under Norman Manley's leadership that Jamaica achieved full internal self-government in 1959, a precursor to political independence that would come three years later. Manley's dedicated service to Jamaica earned him the Order of National Hero in 1969. Norman Manley died on September 2, 1969. Sir Alexander Bustamante, the undisputed champion of the working class. As a trade unionist, he earned the title when he tackled unemployment and the terrible pay and working conditions facing working class Jamaicans. Sir Alexander spoke fearlessly against the English colonial rulers, writing several letters to the Gleaner and occasionally to British newspapers. Widespread discontent led to social unrest in 1937 and 1938. And all the time, Bustamante continued to champion the cause of the people. On September 8, 1940, he was detained for an alleged violation of the Defense of the Realm Act. He was locked up for a year and five months. Sir Alexander later founded the Jamaica Labour Party in 1943 and won the first general election under universal adult suffrage in 1944. He also became the first Prime Minister of an independent Jamaica in 1962. Sir Alexander died in 1977. One man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. Wise words said by Nelson Mandela himself. A person who is admired for their great bravery and acts, as well as their finest qualities, is celebrated throughout time as a hero. There are so many ways to honor and salute those who have relentlessly served and sacrificed for our beautiful island, Jamaica. Seven outstanding individuals who served and sacrificed with heart, blood, perseverance, and intention. Each fought in a different sphere, through physical battles against social injustices and political inequalities. But they collectively and historically change the trajectory of Jamaica, Jamaicans, and the entire black race. So 
on this day and in this time, as we celebrate and salute our heroes, we must make mention and laud them for their impact and reach. Now, as we say, ladies before gentlemen, so it's only right to begin with the fearless and ever-conquering Queen of the Maroons, Nani. A woman of mystery, known for her fiery and bravery, daredevil boldness. The woman who, alongside with her brothers, championed the Maroons and fought for our freedom till her dying breath. She remains a stalwart of honor, freedom, and stands as a legend of the times. Daddy Sharp, I would rather die upon yonder gallows than to live in slavery. A man who dedicated his life to his faith, God, and his people till his dying breath. He led the charge for the Christmas Rebellion, which amplified a chain reaction of change across Jamaica. Which brings us all the way over to the east, Paul Bogle, yes, the bishop himself, who marched from Stony God to St. Thomas to Spanish Town to demand an audience with the colonial masters so he could plead the case of the oppressed farmers. His actions inspired many, and he went on to rally others for the Morant Bay Rebellion, which cost him his life. A friend in the collective fight for freedom, who did not have to risk his life, but chose to do so for the greater good. George William Gordon. Without waver, he helped to carry the struggles and weight of the black man and community. Rather than blindly and comfortably continuing to live in his privileges, he rallied and fought with our people, for which he paid the ultimate price, like his friend Paul Bogle. This, however, is a price we will continue to laud and assure that it will and should never be gone unsung or unheard. And then we move on to the great man himself, Marcus Mosiah Garvey. He had a vision, not just for Jamaica, not just for Jamaicans, but for people of African descent across the globe. Yes, a man of vision indeed. His words of wisdom ring true today, shifting, challenging, and directing generations of freedom thinkers and freedom fighters. The man himself, who challenged us all, not only to fight the physical, but the mental and social barriers that restrict us from actualizing our truest potentials as black people. In one of his famous quotes, he said, If we as a people realized the greatness from which we came, we would be less likely to disrespect ourselves. A revolutionary, a stalwart of excellence. That is Marcus Mosiah Garvey. Now on to Norman Manley. Yes, a very big influence still remains a force in politics and law in Jamaica. He formed one of our two main political parties and believed that self-governance was important, important rather to independence and still is to this day. Lastly, but by no means least, Sir Alexander Bustamante, and this man is considered the father of our nation, and he dedicated his life to Jamaica and was imprisoned actually in 1940 on charges of, of subversive activities. The widespread anti-colonial activism finally resulted in Parliament granting Jamaica's universal adult suffrage in, you guessed it, 1944. No, as an ambassador for Westmoreland, it is only fittingly appropriate and appropriately fitting that I mention the role that our parish played in this fight alongside Sir Alexander Bustamante. Yes, so it was the riots at the Froome Sugar Estate during the times when workers and laborers were going through very harsh working conditions. And, and so they decided to riot alongside Sir Alexander Bustamante. And so this we played a very pivotal role. It was those riots that played a pivotal role in putting our people on the path or our country on the path of becoming self-determined peoples. So you see, the concrete has dried, the foundations have been laid, and though we have a far way to go, we must laud and applaud the efforts of those people that have gone on, who have served us and sacrificed 
every single thing in their power to get us to where we are today. We must make a concerted national effort to always promote our proud heritage among our people, particularly our youth. They need to know, embrace, and treasure or Jamaican history and culture and face the challenges of the future with confidence, optimism, and hope. The spirit of our heroes is within each and every one of us. That spirit of sacrifice, the sense of responsibility and duty towards others, that inner belief we are connected to a higher calling, something bigger than ourselves. It doesn't take something or anything revolutionary for us to be heroes of our own. It just takes a simple sacrifice. It just takes a simple effort to do something selfless. And so I implore you, be selfless, be charitable, and always give with a willing heart in whatever ways you can. And so that being said, it is also important for us all to remember that as citizens, we are ambassadors for our rich culture, a deep-rooted history gifted to us by our ancestors and those who fought for our advancement. I therefore use this opportunity to charge you all, especially the youth, as a promise of tomorrow's world and tomorrow's Jamaica. The onus is upon us, mm -hmm, on you, to ensure that the past is never depleted, never lost, and that it never becomes only but a story. It is on us to ensure that those up and coming will be reminded through our actions, the initiatives we bring and perpetuate. Ensure that you continue to add color, flavor and dimension to your island. Ensure that the very things that makes us unique, that makes us Jamaican, continues to be placed at the forefront. Our language, music, food, our customs, our folkways and traditions continue to be innovative and authentically Jamaican, whether through the performing arts, agriculture, education, science, whatever it is, celebrate it bask in its glory because our ancestors or heroes worked relentlessly hard to ensure we are where we are and we are who we are happy heritage week to you all take care
What was Nanny of the Maroons famous for? All right, first and foremost, I must say that I am very proud and elated to be leading a read for the great Nanny of the Maroons. She was a great military leader of her people of the Windward Maroon in Portland, right? She was also a Obia woman, as she was famous for, for making magical portion for her warriors in time of war. So even the British soldiers feared her because of those portion, magical portions that she prepared for their success in war. She was a brave leader. She was an outstanding leader for her people and well respected in Maroon Town, known as Nanny Town in Portland. Hello Garfi. Tell us what you know about our national hero Samuel Shah. Well our national hero Samuel Shah is an instigator of the Christmas Rebellion, which um, was the main cause of the abolition of slavery in the British colony of Jamaica. Uh, in this, he told the enslaved Africans to not work after the Christmas because of, if they are not getting paid, they should not work. In the British Caribbean um, colony of Jamaica, there was a lot of inhumane treatment against these enslaved Africans and he saw that as being wrong because, you know, in treatment you, sh you should be treating everybody equally so you know because of this he rose up and he was the main voice for the people in which the christmas rebellion formed or was born uh, which is now celebrated uh, mr sharp is very i would say he's my major or my number one national hero um, because of that Many of us are now, all of us as a nation, are now free to do as we please. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello, Dante. Hello. Why is Marcus Garvey your favorite hero? And what has Jamaica done to honor him? All right, so Marcus Garvey is my favorite hero because of his, his fight on re resiliency in the fight for education for all as well as his contributions to black employment and their development. Also, the, um, what Jamaica has done to honor, him. honor his memory is they have high schools named after him, roads, we have the Marcus Garvey Driving Kingston, as well as youth information centers in his honor. Also, the, J the Jamaica Development Commission has an award that is, which is the highest award a performer could get. So I would say they have done enough to honor his memory. Thank you, Dante. Hello, Mrs. Williams. Thank you for sharing in our Heroes Day program, Parent to Parent. Tell us what you know about our national hero, George William Gordon. Okay, George William Gordon is named, Gordon House is named after the right excellent George William Gordon. He was born in the parish of St. Andrew and his picture appears on the table of Thank you. You're welcome. Hello, Kelvin. You have just laid a wreath honoring National Hero Paul Bogle. What is your takeaway from this experience? Paul Bogle was fearless and resilient. He was a true dynamic leader who fought against injustice. Through his demonstration, the Mark Bay Rebellion brought about social and economic betterment of the people. From that, we have learned that citizens, that as citizens of Jamaica, Anything our mind can conceive, we can achieve it. Thank you. Hello, Chadwin. What impact has Norman Manley made to the development of Jamaica? Norman Manley was Jamaica's first Prime Minister, the founder of the People's National Party, and an advocate for universal adult suffrage. He was an adult lecturer, lawyer, and a government where he paid special attention to the cause of workers and their working environment. Thank you, Chadwick. You're welcome. Share with us two contributions made by Sir Alexander Bustamante that has created pride in being a Jamaican. William Alexander Bustamante was Jamaica's first Prime Minister. He campaigned for workers' rights and was imprisoned for his belief. He founded the Bustamante Industrial Trade Union, the first trade union in Jamaica. 
Thank you. You're welcome. On behalf of the Humanities Department of Noble Godfrey Stewart High School, we thank you so much for celebrating with us today. Our theme, saluting our heroes, safeguarding our legacy. I hope you were enlightened. Happy Heroes Day, everyone. Self from mental slavery. No.